Angela Fazio is an industry powerhouse who has overseen 40,000 homes sold and 9 billion in production. And Kristen Cantrell is one of the nation's most accomplished team leaders, helping thousands of agents build their businesses. They are passionate about educating, encouraging, and empowering moms in real estate. Our next episode starts now. Hey guys, it's Kristen Cantrell. And this is Angela Fazio. Welcome to Moms in Real Estate. We have an amazing guest today. Her name is Aoife Freeman. And Aoife is going to talk to us about victorious people never settle for normal. I'm so excited for this topic. Who so wants normal? Ooh, I don't like that. normal. Normal is boring. <laughs> boring. <laughs> so Aoife, start, tell us a little bit about yourself. So thank you so much for inviting me on. I am super excited to join you ladies on this mission. Um, so thank you for letting me participate. Um, so my name is Aoife Freeman. I am a New Yorker through and through, and I became a real estate agent in 2018. Um, and I Barely became a real new. estate agent. Very new. Really mm -hmm. good timing. Really good timing to like excel in my career. <laughs> and, um, before that, I was a director of operations for banks like Goldman Sachs, UBS, um, Bank of America, and I was running their food and beverage departments um, and internal events. So I was also married, and um, there's a few things that led to a failed marriage, but ultimately it got me into <laughs> becoming a realtor. That's Axel. Hi, Axel. <laughs> Hi, Axel. That's my baby. He never barks. And of course, like the mailman's probably coming. No, that's, you know what? This is an authentic show. Whatever yeah. happens, happens. It's all yeah, yeah. good. Um, you totally so, are a New Yorker th through know, and through. 100%. It's so funny. I feel like you just like, you just radiate New York. Oh, radiate, radiant, because her name is Eva, oh, and that means radiant. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's I love right. it. That's right. That's cool. So um, what was I just going to say? Oh, what? Really interesting fact. Obviously, you're um, used to being successful because your first year in real estate, you were rookie of the year and mm -hmm. like top of your brokerage already. Yeah, right? like top five out of 90 and as a baby agent. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. One this thing that year... I really. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go, Kristen. Go ahead. Well, I think one thing I, I really found uh, awesome about you was when we were talking the other day, um, you talked about your billboard and. When you start talking about your billboard, I just imagine imagine that you were going to tell me that you've been a real estate agent for 15 years. And I was like, when did you get licensed? And you said 2018. And I'm like, I love that because you you understand investing in yourself early on. And that's like a big, a big deal. Yeah. I mean, listen, I think that when I came into this industry, I mean, I feel like this was I was created to do this. I wanted to actually do it in 2007, 2008. And I was working in corporate America and my brother was like, he's in corporate real estate, but more on the property management side and engineering side. And he told me like, you really need to get into commercial real estate in Manhattan. And it was right before the crash happened. My mom actually passed away right after that. So he was kind of just like trying to help me like move along from that. And I remember being so terrified and, um, I was too afraid to take the test. Cause like, I'm just not, I'm not a studious girl. You know, like I just, I, I did okay in, in, in high school, never went to college. Um, and so there was a, like a lot of internal blocks for me to get through that. And after my divorce in 2016, um, after a little bit of healing, I decided like now is the time to, I had such a great opportunity to really invent myself and invest in myself in a way that I never had before because I was trying to build a family, you know, and we were doing IVF and we were doing an adoption and we were buying a house and like all of these um, elements just completely fell apart. And mm -hmm. there was a moment in 2018, in the summer of 2018 in July, on a Wednesday, I was like, wow, maybe, you know, Angel, like God just gave me this inspiration. Like this, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I couldn't have made this up if I even tried, but like 
one Wednesday, I had the idea of like, let's see what the class is like. By Friday, I was taking the class and nice. I passed on the first try. And so it really just helped my confidence. Um, so I knew that I know I have like, I'm a workhorse. I'm a workhorse. So it was just like navigating how to get there. And once I got there, I mean, I was off. I cannot imagine you not being confident. You exude I confidence. I know. Like, I, and I mean that sincerely yeah. now. And that, and that should encourage our audience because don't judge a book by their cover. We all yeah. have insecurities yeah. and mm -hmm. we all have things that hold us back. We were just, t just talking about this with a lovely lady uh, a few minutes ago about limiting beliefs and crushing those. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I've got chills right now because God is so sweet to us to be able mm. to give us moments of intervention and moments of mm. breakthrough so that you can do something that clearly you're made for. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and the thing is that, you know, in my former career, I was always like worried about myself. How much money am I making? What time am I getting home? Like, am I doing enough for this and that? And with this opportunity, I am of service to my clients. Like oh, that's it. Good. That is that's the good. only reason why I'm here. I get to really uniquely help these families get to their next destination. Um, whether that's coming to New York or leaving New York. And um, I really, it feels like a true privilege that God has so fit to trust me in this way. Excuse me. God bless you. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. I Thank know. you. He does. He blesses her all a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my I gosh. Yeah. Well, you know what I always, I think about when I, I hear your story is just the, there's a, a quote and it's something sometimes good things fall apart so better things can fall together and I feel Ooh. like Ooh, that was mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. I actually have it tattooed on my side you do? <laughs> yeah. why haven't I seen that I don't know but anyways so I just you know I hear your story and that quote pops into my head because sometimes you do go through really really hard times and things are falling apart but it's for I mean look what it pushed you into and look at how you're like this is what I was born to do and how much you've embraced that and it's been such a positive thing for you, although probably you never saw that, that there was going to be positivity that came out of what happened, you know? Yeah. yeah, that's one of the what's one of the privileges of loving the Lord, because you do understand, even if it doesn't feel like it, mm -hmm. that all mm -hmm. things work together for the good of those he loves. And, and so, sure. gosh, I can't imagine going through IVF. Uh, an adoption that doesn't go right, going through a divorce, you know, and going, how do, how is this going to work out? Like that doesn't yeah. seem so great. Yeah. And you know what? I really did have the faith to know that the next thing was going to be God given because I really, I really believe that like my plan had to be broken down. My plan had to be destroyed because I really wasn't living in the way of the Lord during that time when I got married. And, um, slowly and surely, like I started to have this really incredible experience with my relationship with God and that started to take precedence over my marriage. And it's one of the things that really impacted my relationship with my partner because, you know, um, we were not congruent. We weren't on the same page. We weren't aligning on a lot of values and, um, you know, we weren't growing together. So... I remember like the day after, um, you know, actually the day before, like the agency called me and told me that this birth mom that we had connected with and we were committed to going through, she was going to be delivering in two months. I had girl, I had dinner with one of my girlfriends the night before. And I said, if this adoption doesn't work out, I had already been through IVF and I use eyes and those failed. I said, if this adoption doesn't work out, I'm leaving the marriage. And literally the next day, girls, at 9 a.m., I was in Central Park. We were living in Manhattan at the time. And I was I was praying and meditating underneath the tree. I'll never forget it, right in the middle of the Great Lawn. And um, the agency called and said, we're really sorry, but she's decided to keep the baby. Wow. Holy That's shit. That's crazy. I've got goosebumps all crazy. over my body yeah. right now. Crazy. So Crazy. there are no mistakes in God's no. world, you know, like it's so I really like that was a direct that was one of the loudest and direct messages that I've ever received. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. So sweet. That's awesome. God yeah. is so good to us. And, you know, it's so funny. I didn't get I didn't know Jesus until I uh, was almost 30. 
And so I always say I had a horrible first marriage. It was a complete and utter failure. And I chose my first husband, but God helped me choose my second husband. And that's why it worked so beautifully. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you really know what been I, a rebuilding of what he wants for me. I still can't get over the fact that you could meditate in Central Park. I'm not like a, I don't, I'm not familiar with Central Park, except I imagine it's like crazy busy. So how did no, you do no, that? No, it's big. Oh, no, it's gorgeous. I mean, it's one of the most serene spots I think um, that I've ever had experience with. I mean, there are just moments and places in that park when you know, you know, so you go to them. And um, it was cool. early in the morning and people are at work and it's not a commute place. Like it's more of like walkers around this great lawn. And um, yeah, no, I mean, there are some really good nuggets in Central Park that you can find and absolutely have space to meditate. My husband was uh, born and raised in New York. Ah! So you would love Where, him. You would Long, love him. Right? It's from Long Island? He did live in Long Island, but he was, uh, he lived in Queens. And, mm. and he, he ran strip clubs for the mafia. He was a bad guy. Oh my God. I used to work at a strip club. I was a bartender. <laughs> She's whispering like, no one's going to hear. No one's going to hear you. Seriously. Yeah. He ran strip clubs for the mafia in New York. He was a drug dealer. He was a drug addict. He was a total oh. de degenerate, a, oh. a total bad guy. Is he he's sober? He's not, he's not anymore. Yeah. No, he's not. A, he's not a bad guy. He's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus yeah, got a hold I mean, of him. Well, I think that's the deal, girls. It's like people uh -huh. like us need Jesus more than anybody. I mean, that's why yeah, I'm so I like, <laughs> right? Like, that's why I am committed to living my life in this way because I know what my life was like without him. And so that's why Kristen uh -huh. that quote has stuck with me for years. Like victorious people never settle for normal because he's got yes. a better plan for me than I would have ever been able to imagine. And like, I don't deserve any of it. I don't deserve any. Of I, I agree. I feel the same way. I have so much gratefulness that it yeah. just absolutely overflows every day. I can, I cannot believe the blessings in my life. Can't believe yeah. it. And listen to this platform. Like who knew that we would be on this platform to be able to like praise and worship that power in our lives. Like this relationship. Like, yep. I, I mean, yep. it's, it's really I'm not going to lie. So Kristen gave, so Kristen gave her life to Christ a couple years ago, a year ago. Yeah, a year and a half ago. A yeah. year and a half ago. And I prayed for her for five years straight. I'm oh like, Lord, gosh, I love this girl. I know. I, I said, know. I love this girl. And this is what I used to always pray. I love her. And I, I thank you for the time that I have for her here on this earth, but I want time with her forever. Amen. I used to pray that over and over and over. And I'm <gasps> going to tell you something. Yeah, we are educating, empowering, encouraging women, moms in real estate, but the Lord brings almost every guest. I know it's so is a cool. Christian. Almost yes. every no guest praises mm -hmm. the Lord. I'm not kidding. Well, and it's it's not by design. It's by it's by him. It's his no, design. Of course, it's not our design. Listen, I think that's how I found you actually, Angela, because you had posted one of your friends getting baptized. Was it this one? This that's me. That's oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how cool. Yeah. That is so cool. See how so cool that, that is. And you know what? So go ahead. Yes. And that our our it's just like the moms in real estate community. It's just like it's I, I always say like we cannot be selfish because we get in front of you guys all the time and we get blessed to have relationships with you guys. But the flourish event is really to bring all of you together to get to know each mm. other because we're like, we're in front of all these people. We got to get them in front of each other. I want you to be a speaker on flourish this year. What is Flourish? We do a women's event and it's uh we do it twice a year. This will be our third one. And wow. it it developed out of moms in real estate and girl educate yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's a fantastic. We we highlight mm -hmm. um women uh, in business, women in real estate. We all get together. It's extremely so encouraging. It's so much fun, huge relationship building. And I want you to come. The next one's April 20th, 21st, and 22nd. And I want you to be a speaker. I'm in. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm in. I look at you. I put, you I put her on the spot. There's no way you could say no. I, I can like feel how you are. There's, there's no, no. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I'll make it I happen. I love it. Okay, good. So tell tell the audience a little bit about like, you know, going through, um you know, some of the struggles that you've gone through in your life. How did you pull out of that? Yeah. Wow. 
it depends on when in my life. I mean, I feel like we just captured a lot of that, you know, like really relying on, on God is the thing that gets me through it today. I don't think I was as grateful, um, not grateful, but as graceful as getting through trials and tribulations. Like for example, my mom passed away when I was 28 and I was not a sober woman. I was not a Christian and, and I handled it, um, with a lot of pain, you know, and, um, I wish like today to be there for my father, to show up for my family members and my loved ones in a way that I do today versus what I did for what I consider when my mom was alive are vastly different. Um, because she really, I mean, not like, you know, I think our perception of ourselves is always worse than the truth. Well, that's my experience. Like I'm always, I have like a really heavy handed batting stick for myself and I have very high expectations. So, um, when I look back, I get to see like how I was lacking, um, as a present daughter for my mom while she was sick and ultimately like, you know, on her deathbed for a year. Um, and I don't want to do that ever again. You know, I want to be a present woman. I want to be present in my family's life. Um, so I'm divorced. I don't have children. I have 15 nieces and nephews that I get to adore. Shut up. Oh my yeah. God. But, like, wow. but listen, from the ages of like 30, what am I, 42? So I have a 39-year-old. She might even be 40. And she's got two kids. To the youngest is three. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Wow. You have so all the fun that. ages. It sounds like my kids, 30, <laughs> 26, 22, 17, 15, and 11. <laughs> so you, you can have, have one if you want. You have six kids. No, thank you. I'm good. Yeah, you can have Trust one. Me. I have one up for grabs. <laughs> <laughs> I tried so hard to have children because I thought that was like the only way for me to live a fulfilling life. And... um. I've come to really understand that like God knew me better than I knew myself. And mm -hmm. that is not for me, you know, for whatever reason, like I've been used and I will continue to be used in other ways, um, mm -hmm. in children's lives to help them grow and flourish. And, um, you know, I have a niece who's 14 years old that she's my little like sidekick. She's my little ride and die. And, she also gave her life to the Lord a couple of years ago. Um, awesome. And so it's just been, it's been really great to like have those connections and just be really mindful of like who I am for these people in my life. It's not about me anymore. You know, it's about how I would I totally want you. To, I would totally want you to be my, I, wa I want you to be my aunt. I know. Yeah, I was literally aunt. totally. <laughs> Really? I was thinking the same thing. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. Yeah, that just add, awesome. add to that list. Now it's 17. Done. <laughs> you know, one of the things I'm so glad, I'm so glad that you're transparent about the fact that having, you know, there's, I bet you there's women listening to you right now going, what a weight off my shoulders to, mm. to, to start to wrap your mind around the idea that not every woman needs to have children. <laughs> I mean, it, that is, I am so glad that you're bringing that up because I think there's so much pressure. There's so much pressure on women to be a certain way all the way down to being a mom, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and God created each of us in his image for his purposes and they don't look the same mm -hmm. and it's okay. And it's okay. It okay. Yeah. And you probably, and just the people out there that are probably going through all the things that you went through, trying to do adoption, trying to go through IVF and they're, they're not getting what they're hoping out of it and knowing that that's okay. Like everyone's walk is different, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yep. It is. You know what? And, and I really like needed to experience the pain in order to get to the other side of that. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Cause I didn't know like what my life would look like without that. Mm -hmm. And so that was a terrifying, like to leave my marriage after all of those failed you know, tries, if you will. Um, I didn't know what my life was going to look like, but I'll tell you, like, if I were to plan my life out from 2016 till today, I would have short-sighted myself. Oh, down. wow. That's good. Oh, you know, I would have really done it. I'm the same way. 
And, and I'm so glad that I was open enough, like the channel was open enough for me to be courageous enough to take these steps, like without knowing where I'm going. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things was that I really wanted to buy my own home. And I literally just closed on my first purchase um, in October. That's so, awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So that was I, one I of the things that when I left the marriage, <laughs> wait, why? I whispered like no one can hear me. <laughs> like you did. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That was one of the oh, goals that I really, when I left that marriage, I needed to know that I was going to be able to take care of myself financially, emotionally, you know, physically. I still hate going to the gym, but like we're getting there. Um, but, <laughs> but I really needed to know that I was going to be okay. And um, these last couple of years as a realtor, particularly last year, because everybody's had their greatest year, um, I left the end of 2021 knowing that I was never going to have to be afraid of where my income was going to come from, because I am mm -hmm. so sure in my skill set, in my intuition, in my passion for this business, that I'm going to just continue to be consistent. And, um, I love it. And that's, yeah. And that's like the gift of all of it. Really. It has no, like the house, the things, great stuff, but like just in that inner knowing that like I'm safe and I can, I'm going to be okay. And, 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 um, I have this skill set that gets me to work. Yep. That's awesome. I love that. How encouraging are you? <laughs> My God. I know. Thank you so much for being so raw and open with us today. Yep. Our audience is going to love you. you. I know you're going to be a favorite. Yes. And if somebody wanted to contact you and get to know you more, how do they do that? Yeah. So they can actually call my cell phone. It's um, it's 917-656-0040. Love text messages. So feel free to shoot me a text. Um, and I'm also available on my website, which is a O I F E dot real estate.com. Nice. Well, if you guys, if you ladies want to get to know Aoife more personally, then you're going to have to come to flourish, which is April 20th, 21st and 22nd here in Chandler, Arizona, a beautiful place to come. Perfect weather, great women, and you can meet Aoife in person. Yes. Amazing. What a good deal. It's actually the place I want to retire. So maybe it'll be a little viewing. It's a work. Step. It's a work. Awesome. Trip. <laughs> we'll bring you to the retirement community. Yes, you will. They're awesome. <laughs> there's a, there's a good, a good bar in one of them. There is. There's actually several good bars in them. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, thank you again for being, oh my gosh, yeah. I gotta see her. Thank you again for being an awesome guest. And um, I will see you in April and we'll talk before then. Bye ladies. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.